tune out from everything else and just have a moment where we, we, we rest in that environment with God, we pursue God, we, we praise Him, we, we pray to Him together as a church, we get to hear word um, together, um, align ourselves with vision, all of that kind of stuff. That happens in such a unique way with church services that I don't think happens in any other ways. Um, and of course, what I think what we should be doing in that space is also turning up the spiritual temperature. It's, it's such a unique place where we, we come and we're present with God. And of course, we get to encounter His presence um, like no other. And, and if we're turning up the spiritual temperature um, in ourselves and, and the way that we facilitate the, the service, um, of course, God's Spirit is just able to do incredible work in us. Um, and that's where we see that, that renewing part of, of Him, um, where so often you know, we have these times of response where God's able to um, bring out some of those things that are within us that He's wanting to change or that He's wanting to get rid of or, or bring to our attention, um, which is just the same way that we can sometimes, you know, sometimes it's good for us to just sweat it out sometimes. Um, and of course, the shock factor that follows that is how we step out into the world following that. And I almost think about it, sometimes we have, you know, we have moments of response that, that happen there and we also have res our response that we need to do on Monday, <laughs> in a sense. It's the immediate things that we do straight afterwards and, and sometimes it can feel like, as soon as we step back into our world, um, it's kind of the rush of cold water. <laughs> you know, we feel the, the culture shock going from one environment straight into another. Um, but just like when I've stepped out of the sauna and, and I'm sort of standing in front of the cold water, it's a little bit like a, all right, clenched fists and just kind of, here we go, and just plunge underneath it. And it's, it's awful for about two seconds. But then of course, it's, it's incredibly refreshing and I just, I feel such a change in, in me physically. Um, and I get to, I actually carry that as I go out into the rest of the day. Um, I think this is a way that we can actually really have a, a true life-changing God environment in church and, and just the way that our, our vision says, you know, we want to foster an environment of faith and a, a culture of possibilities. You know, that's what I see at play here with this sauna effect, really. Welcome City Life Church. Hello, hello. So good to see you here. It's awesome. Thank you for inviting us into your lounge rooms and thank you for joining us here today for our online service. This is our second weekend, weekend that we are yeah. doing online church services and it is so amazing. I'm so excited for what's going to happen today. Yeah, so for those of you we have not yet had the privilege and the honour of meeting, my name is Amanda and I'm part of the team out at City Life. Casey. And my name is Chris and I'm part of the team here at City Life. Knox, and we would just love to welcome you here today. And we were, we're already seeing all these amazing people just communicating with us and just joining us in the chat. Hello, Ben. Hello, Robin. Hello, Jessica and Mark. It's so good to see you guys here. Now, it's a bit awkward because we want to really like be part of this community yeah. and just join in everyone. But you guys can all see us, but yeah. we can't really see you. So we're going to issue you guys a bit of a challenge today during this, this whole service online is we want you guys to take some selfies of where you're at. We want to see where you're watching from, who you're watching with, who's with you at the moment, where are you live streaming from. And if you guys could just post those um, selfies just on our Facebook chat, send them to us however way you can. We want to see who you're with and where you're watching from because we want to feel that connection vibe. Yeah. We want to be part of that community right now as well. Yeah, and even if you're at home by yourself with your dog, your cat, take those photos, oh, yeah. send them through to us. Make sure you show the online community, the online church service that's happening that you're watching as well in your post. We'd love to see those photos coming through. It's so great to see so many people. Hey, Bells, Cat Bell, Rob Bell, Alexandria. It's so great to see you guys here with us. And Kim, it's so good to have you all join us. It's really exciting. Mm. We've got so many great things for today, one of which we've got a special service also for our kids. We've got Kids Connect. So if you're watching our online service just below, 
you'll see a Kids Connect section. If you head to that section, you open it up, there is a lesson there, there mm. is craft, and there's also an amazing video, which I watched today, from Dave Colley out at Casey. He's the man a man. Of many voices. Many voices many and many talents. talents. That's right. Yeah. He's, so, he's so smart. He's so clever. So I encourage you to set up your kids with their tablet, um, get them set up as well for the online service, which is just about to happen. Mm. Um, it's going to be a great way for the whole family to engage in an online service. Yeah, awesome. Hello to Richard. Hello to Unique. Hello, Eva. Mum, hi, how you doing? <laughs> hi, That's mom. awkward. Didn't realise that was my mum. <laughs> hi, mum. How you doing? Good hey, Catherine. You. It's so good to see you. And Bree, yes, big shout out to your amazing husband, Dave. It's really cool. Yeah, well, if you're joining us here for the first time, we want to give you a special welcome into our online services. We love getting connected with everyone around us. We have a thing called live groups where we meet up in little social settings. Um, at the moment, they're all meeting online, but yes. we would love to get you connected to one of those um, little live groups. So if you want to get connected, um, if you go on our City Life website where we're live streaming from, just down below next to the Kids Connect area, there is a little form that you can fill out some of your contact details on. And we would love to get in contact with you during the week and get you connected to one of these groups because here at City Life, connection is so important yeah, to us. So yeah, so important. And obviously, we're all about sharing moments with each other, each other, sharing meals, mm. sharing life together. And obviously, a key way that we do that is through our life groups. And obviously, we can't share meals together at the moment mm. in a practical, um, face-to-face -face sort of way. But we can do it um, virtually over the internet. So I encourage you with your life group, set up a Zoom call. Or mm. maybe if, you, you know, if you, you're an extrovert like me and you need to have a conversation, give someone a call. Mm. Um, but yeah, let's try and continue that, that shared moment, shared meals and shared life together. And, and if you're new here for the very first time, we'd like to give you a warm welcome. Again, like Chris said, we'd love to get in touch with you. So please fill out that form so one of our pastors can get in touch with you and connect you to our amazing church community, which is online at the moment. Yeah, and even after the service, if you'd love to go and get connected and have dinner with a live group online as well, we've got to keep that safe social distancing <laughs> yes. really important right now. But even just show everyone what you're eating through your Zoom call, your WhatsApp, whatever it is, and just have a meal together because we are a church in yeah. many, 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 many locations, locations at the moment. <laughs> yes. I think we've like gone the most growth in the yeah. church has seen since the book of Acts. That's right. Which we've, is incredible. We've gone from a handful of different sites out at Casey. Hello to those of you at Casey. Mm. Knock. Hello to those of you at Knox and Hello, Whittlesey, Whittlesey yeah. and Manningham, our Chinese church yes, congregations, yes. and those who are watching from Bali and also Ethiopia as yes, well. Yes, welcome. We want to give you guys all a special welcome, but yes. this is an amazing time for us as a church to meet yeah. up in many, many locations, but still be one church body, which is absolutely incredible. Yeah, that's right. Our church has grown from a handful of sites to 52,000 different yeah. sites all in the one go. It's awesome. really cool. And it's fantastic. Welcome, Gary. Welcome, welcome, Dave. It's great to to see you all interacting with us online. So again, I'd encourage you just to be getting out your phone, take a selfie if you're not using it to watch your online service. Um, take a selfie of you watching the online service and post that to our Facebook page because we'd love to be able to interact with you, engage with you, see how you're doing online church in your home, whether it be a Zoom call, maybe you're doing it with a life group and you're all watching the service together. We'd love to see those photos. So I encourage you to keep sending those photos through to us. Yeah, this is one of the few times where we encourage you to use your phones during yeah, church. Yes. So please get connected as best as you can. Give someone a call. Shoot some messages out. If you've got friends that you want them to watch the live stream, shoot them a message right now. Say, hey, the live stream has started. Where are you? Yes. We need to watch this from their own house, of course. We want to keep that safe distancing as well. Yeah, but right. I think we're about to come to a time of worship, yes. which is going to be incredible. Exciting times. Mm. So we are going to be thrown to our auditorium where we're going to be having Gareth and Jesse Dutlow lead us in a time of worship. So wherever you are, if you're at home right now in your living yeah. room, in your bedroom, let's just take a time, whether you need to stand, whether you want to sit down, however it is you want to express yourself. But we want to really press into that space of worshiping yeah. God because even though we're not here in the building, we are still the church. We are yeah. still God's people. Yeah. And we really want to just push into that place right now. It doesn't matter how awkward it is. If you're home, this is the best time for you to sing as loud as you yes. want, as loud as you can. It doesn't matter. Yes. No one's going to really care because everyone <laughs> loves you exactly where you are. So let's really go into that space. So I encourage you, join with us as we get ready for worship. Thanks, guys.
Father, good to have you with us. Get ready to praise and worship our God. He is worthy of our praise. Right where you are, let's get ready to praise Him. Amen. Let's sing. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a
the name but the name of Jesus the righteous run into your name and today Lord we want to thank you for the name of Jesus your name brings life your name brings deliverance your name brings healing and today nothing can contest against the name of Jesus nothing can compete against the name of Jesus and whatever situation that we might be going through whatever challenges that we might be going through whatever struggles that we might be going through we speak the name of Jesus over the situation that your name will bring healing. Your name will give life. Your name will bring hope today. In Jesus' name. And if you love Him, why don't you say Amen and Amen. Well, welcome to City Life Church. And what an honor and privilege that we can worship here together. My name is Daljit Gill. And we are one church meeting in various locations all over our city and we'd like to especially welcome all those from KC, from Manningham, from Whittlesea, from Knox, and our Chinese Church Kang congregation, and also overseas in India, in Bali, and in Ethiopia. A 
big welcome to all of you. And if you're new, we'd like to welcome you here today and we'd love you to be part of our church family. And the process is very simple. All you have to do is text to this number the word NEW, N-E-W, and we will be able to send you some information about our church and a great opportunity for us to connect with you and to help you to be part of our church family. And we're also aware that during this time, uh, there could be some people who might be feeling a bit lonely, feeling a bit isolated. Do you know that we have about 500 live groups that meet all over our city? And so we like to sort of encourage you to be part of a live group where you receive pastoral care, you'll be well supported, and also be able to pray with you and journey with you. And so if you'd like to be part of a live group, again, the process is very simple. Text this number with the word. Either you can text it as LG or live group, and we will be in touch with you shortly and be able to help you connect to a live group that just fits you. Thank you so much, Delgit, for that great reminder about staying connected. Mm. Just in case you didn't get that number, it's 04888 So please text through LG or Life Group or new to that number and we'd love to get you connected. It is fantastic to see so many photos coming through. So make sure that you message them through to City Life Facebook page. We would love to build up a supply of them and um, do some advertising with them in the future. And it's great to see so many kids in those photos as well. The kids loving the service, engaging with the service. And yeah. just in case um, you haven't yet um, printed out the craft, this is the craft here. This is um, Jesus Calm in the Storm. So I encourage you to print that out. And this is probably a really great opportunity for you to do that now. Print mm. that out. It's double-sided. You set up the kids to do some colouring for the next bit. Um, it's a puzzle as well. The kids, have, the kids pastors have done a great job at putting these um, packs together for us to be able to do kids' church at home. Yeah, and for the rest of us, we come to a time of greeting in our service. And it might be a little bit awkward because you may know everyone around yes. you or you may be, you know, alone <laughs> with your pet. But hey, get to know their name. Yes. Get to know something new about them that you've never known before. Um, this is the perfect time to go refill on your yeah, snacks or your drinks. Snacks. You know, maybe head to the bathroom if you need to. Um, but we also want to get those selfies in. So make sure you're sending those selfies. Send them through to our messenger on Facebook, our Sid Life page. Um, please don't take the selfies in no. the bathroom. Yep. That is the opposite <laughs> we of what we want. want. <laughs> We want community sort of setting. So please send them through as best as you can. But um, they're going to be amazing, awesome. And we really want to be part of that community and just see how yeah. they're going as well. And when you're, at, when you're checking out the snacks in your pantry, when you're there, make sure that you have a look through your cupboard. If there's anything that you can spare at the moment, there are a lot of people within our community that are in need, a lot of people that are very vulnerable at the moment in the yeah. communities around us. So this is an opportunity for us as a church to respond with love and kindness and being literally the hands and the feet of Jesus to these people around us. So mm. I encourage you, head to your pantry. If there's stuff that you can spare, perhaps next time you're down at the shops and you can um, get a few extra items, City Life Community Care have um, an initiative called Shared Pantry. And it's all about us sharing our pantry, sharing what we have with other people. We serve and live for a generous God. Mm. Um, and so this is our opportunity to be generous with those around us. So yeah. I encourage you to, to um, be part of that. If you um, have a site pastor, perhaps touch base with them or your, any of the staff team at your local site because each of our sites are also doing something slightly different um, in the way of being able to share pantry items mm. with each other. And just with those pantry items, a bit of a disclaimer, we're looking for non-perishable, yeah. unopened, unused, yes, and not <laughs> expired items as well. So things That's like right. jam, cereal, rice, yes pasta, all that sort of thing, even soap and detergent. If you've got any of them that you can spare, please pass them along as well. Deodorant as well. Um, there are some people who would love that, um, especially being coped up at home yes. a lot with your family. Yes. Um, if you've got teenage boys, you'll know exactly <laughs> yes, what I'm talking about. Right. So please, anything you see at the shops, if you can spare, grab them and help us out and help yeah. the community out as well. That's awesome. Well, let's continue to worship through our giving. Thank you so much, Delgit. Well, thank you, online hosts. Well, prayer is the heartbeat of our church and it's central to who we are. And so every first Thursday of the month, we dedicate this day for prayer and fast. And that's coming up this Thursday. And all our prayer points are on the website. Uh, at this time, we're going to bring our tithes and offerings. And so, you know, giving is an act of worship. In fact, uh, Paul in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 8, encourage us to excel in many things, but also in this grace in 
giving. And so today, uh, as you give, the process is very simple. All you have to do is just jump online and the link is available on the screen or even you can go to our website and just follow the links and that will be fantastic. And if you haven't done that, so can I encourage you to do that? Uh, we got a, a refresh platform. It's uh, secure and very easy to use. And so today as we prepare to give, why don't I pray for our gift? Father, we want to thank you. Lord, we want to thank you that, Lord, we know every good thing comes from you. And Lord, we want to thank you for your faithfulness. We want to thank you for the generosity, Father God, of this church who have been giving so faithfully. And Lord, we pray that this gift will be able to use, Lord, to expand your kingdom. And we want to thank you for every gift, every giver, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Well, it's now my great privilege and honor to introduce to you our senior minister who's got a great message. And come on, let's welcome Andrew Chisholm. Hello, City Life Church. We are one church in many locations gathering together online to worship God and to reflect on His Word together. Last week, I shared a message with you called What Remains the Same in Times of Change. We certainly are in times of change, significant change. There's change in workplaces, change in families, change in society, and changes in the way that we do church. So what we reflected on last week was what are the things that remain the same in terms of our church rhythms, our, daily, our weekly, our daily church rhythms as we gather together online. And in order to help us with that, we turned to the Bible. We went to Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, and we identified seven different rhythms of church life which began there with the early church, but continued on right through persecution, right through the first hundred years of the church, and century after century continued on even to our own time today. I'm wondering if you can remember what those seven rhythms of church life were. We're going to do a bit of an exercise now which might help us with that. And whether you were watching last week or you are just joined us today, it's still a good thing to do. I'd like you to turn in your Bibles on your iPhone or your hard copy Bibles to Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. And in your homes there, or by yourself or with the family, why don't you try and see if you can find seven things in there which are characteristics of the early church which you believe continued on and continue on today. Now, I have here with me two friends and colleagues, and it's great to have them here. We've got Brasita. Hello. And Brasita was online host last week. She was our one of our online hosts with Ben. Great job there, Brasita. Thank Good you, Good job. Uh, Brasita is our young adults pastor, and also she's part of our teaching team. So good to have you here, Brasita. Thanks for having me. Also got Kim here with us. You would have seen Kim last year, last weekend. Sorry, and those of you who've been at Casey would have seen him last year. In fact, for quite a few years, uh, he's our lead pastor at Casey. Also part of our senior uh, leadership team here, and so we've got them here to help me with this message today. So, without looking at your phones there, Kim, or without looking at your Bible, I want to see if you can remember what were the seven rhythms of church life in the early church from Acts chapter two, verses forty-two to seven. You the, the clock's going. Off, no cheating. They're racing <laughs> us out there. You guys are going ahead with this. I hope you're getting there. See if you can identify them. Work together. We're going to start now. What do you reckon? Apostles' teaching. Okay, okay. apostles' uh, teaching. So that's the Word of God. Uh, and that's the Word of praise God. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. Prayer and worship. Yes, that's two. Giving. Giving. Uh, or res so resources. Yeah, sharing yes. each other's uh, resources. That's right. Evangelism and mission. Oh, yeah, wrong. reaching out and blessing the community is <laughs> yeah. the way we called it. Um, uh, breaking of bread. Yes, breaking yes. of bread. We've got a great example of that here. <laughs> breaking bread. Communion. Uh, communion, yes, breaking of bread. Um, Thinking of some other areas. Is that seven? Not quite there yet. <laughs> um, meeting two together. More my, my count. Teaching, praise and worship, word of God. I'm saying all the ones we've already got. Relationship. Oh, Relationship. Fellowship. 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 Getting together Meeting in together. community. That's Meeting right. Together. There's okay. one other one there. I think we've got six now. You guys can be counting, making sure we're getting there. There is one more. Um, As they prayed, what happened? Miracles. That's absolutely Signs ridiculous. and wonders. <laughs> yes. There, is, there are signs and wonders. And, you know, that continues on. God can do signs and wonders today. Absolutely. So it's important to remember Amen. that in times and seasons like this. Yes. I think we got there. I think we got seven. I feel that was seven. Yeah. Yep. All right. Not sure how long that took, but I hope you were ahead of us. I hope you, with your head start, you identified all of those. Uh, all of those seven 
rhythms of church life for the early church, which continued on, will come up on the screen now so you can see them there. And you can note them down because we'll be looking at some of those other ones as we go through our online church services in the weeks and months ahead. What I want to focus on today is that particular rhythm of prayer and praise. It's certainly something that's important for us individually, but it's also important in our corporate life together to have a continual rhythm of prayer and of praise. And, you know, it, for the people of Israel, when they got together to pray and to praise, uh, they used the Psalms. The book of Psalms is just this amazing book full of songs. In fact, Psalms mean songs. And this was their song book. This is their hymn book for the people of Israel. And when the Christian church began there back in Acts, they continued to pray and to praise. And they looked to the Psalms because they saw in the Psalms things which pointed to Jesus and Jesus' life and death and resurrection. So they would have created new songs and sung new songs, but they also would have sung the Psalms and continued on in that rhythm of corporate worship. How do we do that in our own time here? Well, that's a bit of a challenge. I'm not that good a singer. I'm sure some of you find that challenging as well. But nevertheless, in our online church services, wasn't it great to have a time of worship just before? And I hope that in your lounge rooms, you just entered into that, lifted up your hands, praised God, and just really worshipped him as croaky as your voice might be like mine. Uh, you know, God doesn't mind us what our voice is like. He just wants to see our heart as we praise and pray him. I just want to reflect on Psalms a little bit. Uh, Eugene Peterson, who paraphrased the Bible in that wonderful version of the Bible called The Message, also has a number of other books that he's written. And in one of those books, I can't recall quite which one it was, he talked about the fact that the Bible is mostly God talking to us. So you've got all these wonderful books which we can come to and read in the Bible and it's God talking to us. But there's one book in the Bible which is different. It's actually us responding and talking to God. That's Psalms. Psalms is what Eugene Peterson calls answering speech or where God has spoken to us. So we actually answer God and we talk to him. We praise him and we pray to him. You know, there's some wonderful psalms of all different types and they really speak to the human heart and all our different moods and all the different seasons we're going through. There's songs or psalms of complaint where people just, the psalmist, whether it's David or the other person or other people who may have written them, just pours out a complaint to God and says, why God, why? And certainly at a time like this, you may be feeling that. Why God, why? Why not come to the psalms and just... Pour out a complaint to God, and then as we do that, God hears that, and there can be a change and a transition in our hearts as we transition from complaint to praise. It's okay to ask God why. He may not necessarily answer, but he certainly can give us a means of walking through that darkness into a place of trusting in him. There's also psalms which are battle psalms. That's where, like, you've <laughs> you got to be careful as you read them because we don't fight people. We don't fight uh, human beings. But there are things that we are in battle with, like sickness, like infirmity, like fear, like an epidemic. And there's psalms in here where you can actually enter into the battle and pray against those things with the spiritual weapons that we have. I'd like to encourage you to read those psalms. There's psalms of praise where we just praise and adore God. There's psalms for the journey when we're going on a journey and a pilgrimage. There's so many different psalms which capture all of the seasons of human life. I want to particularly talk about two psalms today. First psalm I want to mention and share a little bit on is Psalm 91, which is very relevant for us in this time and season. I'd like us to read it together. The scripture will come up on the screen so we can all read from the same version. I'm reading from the New International Version here. And... Uh, I want to read just the first four verses and then make some comments. I encourage you to read the whole psalm in your own time. So reading from verse 1. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Notice first of all, in verse 2 there, he is my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. Trust is trusting God in the dark. Trust is trusting God when we don't really know possibly what's happening. And what a, what a good exhortation for us from the Psalms, that we can trust God. 
He can be our refuge and fortress in this time. Looking at verse 3, surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. And then in verse 4, he'll cover you with his feathers and under his wings you'll find refuge. That whole picture of him, God covering us with his feathers is picked up by Jesus in the New Testament. I think it's around about in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 23, where Jesus, speaking to the people of Jerusalem, says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I wished that I could gather you together like a hen gathers together chickens under its wings. Uh, Tom Wright has written a series, a devotional commentary, which I use fairly regularly. It's called uh, The New Testament for Everyone. And in the particular book in that, Matthew for Everyone, he makes a comment on this passage. You'll find many times or a number of times there are actual examples of where a chicken, or sorry, a hen, as a fire has gone through, has gathered her chickens under her wings and has protected the chickens. In some cases, it's recorded cases where those chickens have actually survived while the hen has died. That's a powerful image to us, I believe, of Jesus. Jesus went to the cross. He died on the cross for us to save us from our mistakes and our wrongdoings and our missteps, our sins. And because of his death, we have life. What a powerful image. Jesus wants to gather us all under his feathers so that we can find protection during this time. I do want to reflect also, though, as you pray or as we pray and sing and meditate on a scripture like this, a song like this, it can be quite challenging because you wonder, well, God didn't protect me. God didn't heal me. This didn't happen. And we can all look back at circumstances where we feel maybe even God has let us down. Uh, so we can be sometimes reluctant to come to the psalm and really put our trust in him. I want to encourage you. John Goldingay, who does the New Testament version, sorry, the Old Testament version of the Bible for everyone. So he has the Old Testament for everyone. And in, in Psalms for everyone, he has this reflection. Back in the 1950s, there were five missionaries who died as they went out to minister to the Orca Indians in Ecuador. One of them was Jim Elliott. And he was just in his 20s. All of them were in their 20s at very tragic circumstances. Jim Elliott's wife, Elizabeth Elliott, wrote a book taking the title from the psalm. The title was In the Shadow of the Almighty, coming from verse 1 there. And you look at that and think, what a contradiction. Here her husband had lost his life, and yet she was able to write a story about that incident and still declare in the shadow of the Almighty. How, how's that possible? Here's, here's, here's a part of an answer for us. In fact, I think it's maybe the main answer. We as Christians have a resurrection hope. Jesus went through death, but then he lives again. All of us, when we put our faith in Jesus, has the hope of a new life in Christ, which begins now, but also goes beyond the grave to a new life with Jesus in eternity. And when you have that type of hope, you can look death squarely in the eye and you can still trust in God. We can trust in God even whatever circumstances we may face. There's also a difference between trust and testing. So I want to point out this part of it now. It's very interesting, also in the book of Matthew, in Matthew chapter 4, and we could turn to it on our screens now. Uh, it's just coming up on the screen. We have Jesus being tempted by the devil. And the devil actually uses Psalm 91 he quotes scripture, which is fascinating. Sometimes you know, we can get the wrong idea with scripture and apply scriptures in an inappropriate way. So what does the devil say to him? Uh, we're, we're looking again at Matthew chapter 4. The devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple and said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they'll lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Here, the devil is quoting Psalm 91, part of the later verses there. And he's putting God to the test. He's putting Jesus to the test. You know, we need to trust God, but not test God. How do we apply that in these circumstances? You know, we're going through a time when we need to abide by and really press into do the things which are 
local, our federal and our national government is doing and encouraging us to do or even requiring us to do during this epidemic. You know, it's testing God to go and start shaking hands because you just believe we're under the shadow of the Almighty. That's testing God. No, we should abide by those rules. We should abide by the distancing rules, the isolation, self-isolation, all those areas. And as there, as more and more there are maybe more stringent guidelines come or more, more stringent regulations, I want to encourage you all, let's not test God, but let's trust God. Let's abide by all of those guidelines which are going to protect the vulnerable in our community, protect our health workers, but at the same time, let's trust that God can do the miraculous and God can take us through this time because we have a resurrection hope and that resurrection hope is available to every one of us. We can believe in God, trust in God, and he will take us even through the darkest valley. Second Psalm I want to reflect on is Psalm 23. Yeah, we've all been through dark valleys. I've been through some dark valleys in my own life. It was, and I know this is going to sound a little bit funny and crazy, but <laughs> during one of my dark valleys, I was actually watching the Vicar of Dibley. It's a bit of a comedy about a vicar in an English village. And it's good to laugh at ourselves sometimes, you know, as pastors, as leaders in the Christian church. Good to have a laugh at yourself sometimes. So I, I quite enjoyed some of those, some of those programs. I was watching it at this time as I was going through a dark valley, a difficult time, and I listened to the song which heads up the series, and it's Psalm 23 being sung to a new setting. As I was listening to that, I just started to weep and cry as God just started to minister into my life. <laughs> Out of a, what was a comedy series, there was actually a sense of God's here speaking to me through Psalm 23. You know, I've actually taken that song from the Vicar of Dibley, sung by a choir in London. I've put it in what I call my prayer playlist. I have a prayer playlist. I learned this from a guy, Mike Connell, who was actually going to come and speak at City Life in these last weeks, but he wasn't able to coming from New Zealand because of the uh, restrictions. He's actually got a few videos that we'll share later. He's talking to City Life Church. We'll put them online for you. You can actually hear from him to encourage us through this, during the season. But uh, Mike Connell spoke at our our conference that we have called Inspired just a couple of years ago. And the one thing I remember from that was he was saying, you know, we've all got songs which we remember when we had significant moments in our life when we had a meeting place with God. And those are like they're locked into us emotionally. Whenever we hear those songs again, something draws us back to that place of being in God's presence. For me, that's the song from the Vicar of Dibley. That's one of them. And uh, Mike suggested, why don't you create a playlist? I mean, on any of the devices or what you have, a playlist of songs and use those songs, which are significant to you, to bring you back into the presence of God. What a wonderful thing to do over this time. I did something like this two years ago. I have a playlist of maybe 40, 50 songs. And when I just want to get back into God's presence, I maybe put my headphones if it's late at night while my wife is sleeping or if... Uh, you know, or maybe I have it playing out loud, but those songs bring me back into a place of praising and worshiping God. And Psalm 23 is one of those songs. Now, I want to just turn to Proceda now. Hello. Proceda, we've all got songs and we've all got psalms which yeah. actually resonate in our hearts and bring us into that place. Tell us a bit about a time when you've had a song and a psalm which has been really helpful to you, maybe in a period of isolation or grief for you. Yeah, so around three years ago, it's coming up to almost three years now, my fiancé at the time passed away very suddenly, right before our wedding. And it was uh, just a horrific time in my life. It was just so much grief and so much sadness in that time. And um, I remember the, the days after he died, the days leading up to the funeral, I would have a friend sleep in my room with me. Uh, just they would they took shifts, you know, uh, my, my closest friends. And uh, I would wake up sometimes three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning just in tears. And they would open up the Psalms and I've ju I would just say, just read the Psalms over me. Mm. And they would read the Psalms over me. Um, and just, it, they became like declarations over, over my life. Um, and a particular Psalm that was really significant to me was Psalm 121. And it, it says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help from, come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And, you know, Psalms like this have just like, they helped me so much in that time. Right. Um, and then from then on, like, you know, when I was able to get out of bed, when I was able to function maybe a bit more um, in my grief, I would go to the beach every day. 
And every single day I would make sure I went to the beach and I would sit there and I would just read these Psalms, you know, Psalm 121, Psalm mm -hmm. 23, um, just over myself over and over again, just believing that God was bigger than my circumstances, mm -hmm. that he was greater than the things that I could see, that he is the God of the unseen as well, that he is victorious in every single circumstance and just believing that he was going to be that in my life. And, you know, at the start it was this, it's this hard journey, you know, when you're going through uncertainty um, and it just feels so difficult sometimes to even open up your Bible. Mm. Um, but, you know, just pressing in and declaring it. And, and months later, you know, you can look back and it just bec becomes easier. Yep. Um, it becomes part of your rhythm, yep. um, part of what you do um, in this season. But, yeah, just pressing into particularly Psalm 121 was a big one for me. And what a great psalm that is. It's beautiful. They call it one of the one of the pilgrim psalms yes. and we're going to be doing a series on the we pilgrim are. psalms it might, yeah. might not be the title we might but give a different title there yeah. it might be the quest or something like that, the, uh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but that'll be later in the year and That's you and i will right. be uh, be part of the teaching team for that series yeah. so we're looking forward to that i'm looking forward to it i think it's going to be a good yeah. one and an important thing for us to look at as a church yeah. as well so thanks so much for sharing that, Prasida. Mm, thank and you. thanks so much for, I'm sure that'll be an encouragement to many people out of your life journey, which has mm. been significant grief and loss, yeah. and yet the Psalms have been so encouraging to you. Oh, so encouraging, yeah. yeah. They helped me through the darkest days. So, yeah. yeah. So, Kim, what about yourself? You know, time of maybe struggle, difficulty. What's, what's a Psalm, what's a song that's been important to you during those periods? So I would say Psalm 23. Uh, so in 2009, um, my wife and my three boys, they were five, seven, and nine, we decided to move to America. It had been a dream come true to work in America. I love Americans. I love the American church. I got a, got a job at a big 10,000-person mega church and just helping them reorientate around evangelism. And four weeks into moving there, my son was diagnosed with leukemia. And we didn't have any family there. We were far away from Australia. It was a sense of grief and um, just confusion, kind of. And Psalm 23 really spoke to me because the dream had been the mountaintop of moving and having this experience. And then now we're in this valley of the shadow of death. Mm. What does it mean to go through sickness? And this isn't you know, um, what our plans were. And just having to trust that God was with us, that he walks with us, mm. that he's rod and he's staff, they comfort us. Yep. We would read that Psalm over and over and over again. And it really pushed my wife and I closer together that we would just pray over him pray that he would experience god's peace through his chemo he, he had chemo for four years mm. and um he's come through that he's just celebrated actually yesterday seven years he took his last chemo Great. so um you know and just experiencing through that time of grief of trusting god that that even though he felt like he was silent it felt like there were times where it was really hard it wasn't what we expected that we could trust God, yep. that he's a good and faithful God. Yep, absolutely. He is a good and faithful God. He's our fortress, he's our refuge, and in him we can trust. Th thanks so much, Kim. Thanks so much, Brasita. They're just great examples of rhythms of pressing into psalms of praise and psalms of prayer during times when we're uncertain and fearful. And that certainly is a time for many of you now as we come into the season where we're grappling with it, this, this epidemic. I'd like us to read together Psalm 23. It's going to, again, it's going to come up on the screen and we'll be reading from the New International Version. So wherever you are in your homes there, all around Melbourne, maybe different parts of Australia, certainly different parts of the world, Ethiopia, India, Indonesia, various of our partners around the world, greetings to you all. Why don't we all together, one church in many locations, read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love or mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As we've been going through this season, 
There was a time just a couple of weeks ago, I've sent it to the congregation in an email I sent out, where I had a dream. I don't have that many dreams, and if I do, that's generally because I ate something I ate the night before. Um, so I don't tend to take too much account of them. But sometimes you just get a crystal clear, clear dream. And at times like that, I've learned over the years just to say to God, God, is that you speaking? And if he gives me a very clear understanding of what it is, I trust that it is him speaking. In this case, the minute I said that to God, I felt something drop into my heart. See, the dream I had was of two hands putting cutlery around a very large table, a little bit like what we have here. And those two hands were just putting it out, preparing to, to a table for a large number of people. And when I prayed and asked, what's that about, God? He said, I'm preparing a table in the presence of your enemies. And I believe God's doing that. God, for his church, for his people, for our community, maybe for our nation, is preparing a table in the presence of our enemies. It's a table of fellowship. And yet we cannot fellowship physically, but we can fellowship online. It's a table of breaking of bread. And remember, breaking bread remembers the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus. It's a table of an overflowing cup. Remember, that was in Psalm 23 too. And so definitely as we come around the table, I believe God is talking to us as we come to Easter about celebrating together, however creatively we can find to do that, in our homes, online, coming together, one church in many locations, coming together at the table, breaking bread together, drinking the cup together and remembering the death and the life and the resurrection of Jesus. Next week, we're starting a series. Kim will actually be sharing the first part of that series. We're, we're calling it At the Table. And it leads us through the season, what the traditional church has called Lent, which is a season of just repenting and getting your right with God, yourself right with God and what a good thing to do during the season. Just say, God, you know, I want to be right with you. Forgive me for those things and help me to have a clean heart and a right, you know, help me to follow you with all my heart. So, but that's leading into Easter. And so we'll continue the series at the table on Easter, Good Friday, Saturday, through to Resurrection Sunday. I encourage you to come online and be a part of that at the table. Let me now pray for you. Let's pray for our whole congregation and every person of you there now. And if you're, if you're not a follower of Jesus and maybe you're just coming in online, this is a prayer you can pray too. You can follow us and just listen to the prayer. And it's also a prayer that you could pray for your own life in this time, in this season, as you're seeking truth and seeking life. You can find life and truth in Jesus. So let's all pray together. Uh, well, I'll pray, listen in, and then when we finish this church service, I encourage every one of you just to sit in your own lounge and have a prayer together as well. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you died on the cross for us. Thank you that we find forgiveness in you. Here we gather around the table. And Lord, help us to remember the sacrifice that you made, how you gave your life for us. Lord, we put our trust in you. We put a trust in your resurrection life. We believe that you rose from the dead. You went through that dark shadow valley and you came through and you rose from the dead. We believe in that. We trust in that. We have resurrection hope. And we pray, Father, as we look forward to the times ahead, whatever comes our way, Lord God, give us the courage, give us the faith, give us the patience, to endure and to grow stronger and be the people you want us to be. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. I'd just like to finish by making a statement. I've said it a few times over the last few weeks, but I'd like you to join with me and let's make this a declaration. And then I want to do a little bit of an exercise after we've said it once where we can all participate and be responsive in the way we say this. God's kingdom is unshakable and his influence is unstoppable. So that's the phrase. You know, in the early church, they had these responsive uh, things that they said, which were called catechisms, where someone would say something and people would respond. And so we can break this up and we can do something like that. You can respond in your homes. I'm going to say God's kingdom is unshakable. You respond and his influence is unstoppable. And then we might add something on to that after that, but we'll just practice the first bit first. So God's kingdom is unshakable. 
and his, and his influence, influence is, is unstoppable. unstoppable. Okay, you guys are doing pretty well. I hope you're joining in with us. One church, many locations right across Melbourne, Australia, various uh, friends and colleagues across the world in places like India, Ethiopia, Indonesia, Bali, wherever you are, let's say this again together. God's kingdom is unshakable. And, and his, his influence, influence is, is unstoppable. unstoppable. All right, now I want to add something to that. I'm going to add, after you've said that, I'm going to say his influence is unstoppable and then you finish with God's kingdom is unshakable. You reckon we can do that? Okay, everybody joining in? So let's do the full thing. And let's make a statement of, a statement of faith. God's kingdom is unshakable. And his, his kingdom is, un no, his, his influence, influence is unstoppable. unstoppable. Yes, and his influence is unstoppable. He's unstoppable. And God's kingdom is unshakable. unshakable. Okay, I see you. we need to do a little bit of work on this. I'm sure you folk out there are struggling a little bit as well. But this I is think. a good thing to do because it helps to sort of embed this in our heart, minds and spirit. So I'm going to try once more. Now, if we don't quite get there, that's fine. It's okay. We're, we're, we're new at doing online church here. and We're still learning. We're, and I'm sure this is a new journey for every one of us right around the world. We haven't been this way before. I've never been a pandemic pastor before. I don't know what you do. I'm just learning as we go. But God's with us. God's kingdom is unshakable. And his, his influence, influence is, is unstoppable. unstoppable. His influence is unstoppable. And his kingdom, and his kingdom is unshakable. Unshakable. His kingdom is unshakable. <laughs> is unshakable. unshakable. Amen. God bless you all. You are an awesome church, one church in many locations. I'll be praying for you right through this week. Please pray, pray for us as well, our whole church team. We're in this together. We're believing that God's kingdom is unshakable and his influence is unstoppable. Thank you so much, Kim and Brazida and Andrew for that really beautiful message. It's a great reminder to be reading through those beautiful Psalms and to be praying um, them. And I'd encourage you at home, take time with whoever is in your presence at the moment, just to take a pause, just to sit and to reflect on the words of Psalm um, 121, Psalm 91 um, and Psalm 23 at this point in time and, and spend time even just praying together. I think it's a really beautiful opportunity that we have just to pray, to stop and to allow God's words just to resonate in our hearts and our minds, perhaps even jot a few thoughts down. Um, yeah, so we'd encourage you to, to do that. Now, we'd also love to encourage you to be giving online. You know, we are, belong to a God who is a very big God, our provider. He is our Jehovah Jireh. He provides through every single situation. And so I'd encourage you to um, be giving online, you know, even through God providing so much for us, we're not, we're not, you know, we need to take, make sure that we take the opportunity to yep. be playing our part, to be taking responsibility for the part that God wants us to be doing in bringing heaven to earth for those around us. And we've also got communion on in our next online service next weekend. Yes, very so exciting. Wherever you're watching from, um, have some elements ready, have some prepared for yourself or whoever's live streaming with you as well because we're going to be taking that together as a community. And our so services cool. next weekend are going to be the same as this weekend, 4 o'clock and 6 o'clock on the Saturday and on the Sunday, 9 and 11 a.m. Awesome. But yeah. thank you guys for joining us for our online service and we'll see you guys all next week. Have a great week. See ya. See you later.